Good morning, and welcome to another Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the purpose of life. We have these little 10-minute sessions here, and I pray that you get something out of them. And we know a lot, of, a lot of people, especially young people, what, why am I here? Why did God create me? Why did He put me where He put me? Uh, what is my purpose in life? What am I supposed to accomplish? And so we're going to kind of look at that a little bit, and maybe you can get a little insight on that. But, uh, we do have a purpose. God creates you with a purpose. Uh, we know that one of the purposes we have is to be conformed to the image of His Son, as He says over in Romans 8.29. And so we understand then that what our purpose is in life is basically to bring glory to God. You know, once you come to know Christ as your Savior, you're to bring glory to Him and He'll use you in different ways. He maybe, he'll, he'll maybe put you like down here, some work in the mines, uh, some work in the schools, some work in the medical fields, there's different places. But God has a purpose for you to bring glory to Him no matter where He sets you and where He puts you in as He puts you into full-time ministry. So. You just need to understand that your purpose, what your purpose is. And so we're going to help you a little bit maybe with that as we look at Scripture. Let's look over Psalm 138, verse number 8. He said, The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. In other words, He's going to complete that which concerneth me. Uh, thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. So He's going to, God said He would never leave us nor forsake us. So what He's, even though we sometimes we stumble, you know, in, in ministry, you, you look at what you do and you have the different responsibilities and, and you try different things like in different programs and sometimes it feels like it, it really really goes good and it really a, a brings fruit for the Lord. And other times it seems like it just, it just falls apart and it don't accomplish anything. But we have to trust the Lord and He says, don't don't forsake the work of thine own hands and, and don't forsake us. Isaiah 43.10 says, Ye are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he before me there was no God formed and neither shall there be after me so again we see a purpose there what to be a witnesses for the Lord so when you and I as Christians okay we look and we need to bear witness of what God has done for us we give our testimony how God changed us here's what I was and then this is what happened when I come to know Christ and this is what I became and he says right here you're my witnesses and my servants so we see those two things we are to be a witness for what he's done in our lives and what he's doing and also the idea that we're his servant he is not our servant okay too many times we get the idea that he's our servant people talk to God like why aren't you doing this or why haven't you done that Remember, we are the servant, and he is the master. So we keep that in mind. Those are two things right there, then a witness and as a servant. Those are per some of our some of the purpose that we have in life. And if we go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse number 11, it says, Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and a work of faith with power and count you worthy of this calling. He's called us. So we want to live up to what's expected of us. We want to, the idea of being worthy of the calling. We can never be truly worthy of God using us. It's a blessing. It's an honor when God chooses you, as we just read up there in uh, Isaiah 43.10. He says we were chosen, and He chooses us to do a work for Him. So when I come to know Christ as my Savior, all right, when I make that decision, I have to make the decision to receive Jesus. And when I do that, then, then He has a purpose for me. And he has something for me to do. And he just says to make us worthy of his calling. I mean, if you remember John the Baptist when he was the baptizing and, and the, the baptism of repentance. And he told the Sadducees and the Pharisees, he said, bring forth some meat uh, and evidence of your repentance, of your change. And that's what we need to do. We need to be able to show some, some evidence of our change. Okay? Verse, uh, Ch Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance... That's in being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. So there's there's a predestination for the believer. This is not you're not predestined to be saved or not saved. You're not predestined to go to heaven or go to hell. What we're predestined to do is to serve the Lord. And that's what he's saying here, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. In other words, he don't need outside counsel. He already knows what he wants to do. And so we're predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. We're predestined to do a work to fulfill an obligation for him once we're saved. And that's what he's talking about there. We have this inheritance. The Bible tells us that we're joint heirs with Christ. And we have this heavenly inheritance waiting for us when we get out of this old world and we go to be with the Lord. And while we're here, we're doing all those things that's going to bless and honor Him. That gives us purpose. That gives us meaning. 
All right, it's not, there's there's no, I don't care where you're at on your spiritual walk as far as your maturity net, God has a work for you. He has a plan for you. He has something you want to accomplish. So if you're looking for purpose, just get into the Word of God, pray, seek God the counsel, and you'll see what your purpose is. We have the gifts of the Spirit when we get saved. We get a gift of the Spirit. We get, it might be it helps, it might be prayer, it might be all kinds of things that we get, those spiritual gifts. But we get at least one of those, and that's to be used in a way to be bring glory to God. We're given that gift as it were to be a steward of that gift. The steward takes care of something that's not his. That gift is given to us to take care of, whether it be prayer, helps, or whatever, to bring glory to God. That's what gives us purpose, not what gives us meaning. Okay, uh, John 10, 10 talks about it a little bit. He says, the thief cometh, uh, cometh not, but, here's the reason, the thief or the devil, uh, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And here you want to see some purpose? I am come, Jesus says, I am come that they may have, that they might have life. And they might have it more abundantly, exceedingly greater than what we actually need. So he's come to give us life. So the life that he gives us then, the Bible tells us over in the fifth chapter of Matthew, what? That we would be salt and light in this world. Okay, we're to be the evidence, we're to help uh, secure and uh, protect the Word of God. And then we're also to be a light that shines in the darkness to point people to Christ. Okay, then we go to Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. So he says, For I know the, the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. So he's talking to the people of the nation of Israel there. And he says, uh, the Judah, and he says, uh, Thoughts of peace and not an evil to give you an expected end. God says, I want good for you. I, I want to give you some good things. He said, I want you to, here's my thoughts. It's not evil. It's thoughts of peace and not evil to give you and expect it. And he wants to bring a, a result in your life. He wants to work through you. And that's, again, that's a, a great privilege. You know, if you're called as a, as a pastor, as a preacher, if you're called to do that, if you're called as a Sunday school teacher, as called in any work for the Lord, that's an honor. That's not something that's a burden. Too many times we get, well, I don't have time for that. You'll be asked to, to do something in the church or do something for someone. Well, I don't have time for that. But listen, uh, the idea is you do that in a way that brings glory to God. If we understand our responsibility, Romans 28 and 29, he says this, And we know that all things, all things now, work together for good to them that love God. So he's not talking about some things. He says all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to His purpose. You want purpose? You're called again for His purpose. He has a purpose for you. He has something He's wanting to accomplish for you. He's got something He wants you to do that will bring glory to Him. Okay, again, again, that gets back to that honor. And if we go a little bit further there in, in verse 29, here's that one we referred to earlier. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. We got back to that word predestinate before up in Ephesians. We talk about being predestinated. And so the idea is that, that he's already planned it out. It's when when you got saved, when you come to know Christ as your Savior, it was predetermined that you should be conformed to the image of your Son. And that's what we're going through this process, you would have sanctification, that each each day I should be more like Christ than I was the day before. You know, it should be an ongoing ongoing process. Uh, sometimes you can look at your life and see, am I any different uh, today than I was on January the 1st? As you get to, a lot of times we reflect back at the end of the year, you know, what's happened in the past year. That would be a good reflection. Am I more spiritual today? Am I closer to the Lord? Am I more Christ-like today than I was 365 days ago? Okay, and the last thing I want to look at is Ephesians 2.10, right after his 2 verse 8 9 for salvation. He says, for we his we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, that God hath before ordained that we should walk into the beginning. Before the beginning of time, as a Christian, God before ordained that we should walk in the ways of Christ. So these are these are things that should be encouraging to you. It should be in the, uh, lift you up and say, you know what, I do have a purpose. You know, no matter how weak I am, no matter how strong I am, how smart I am, or uh, how lack of knowledge I have, no matter where I'm at in the social scale of life, uh, God has a purpose for me, and He loves me, and His Son died for me, and I have a personal relationship with Him. He's my personal God. He is my God. He is my Savior. He's your God. He's your Savior. When you come to know Christ as your Savior. But to do that, you must repent. You must turn to God, put your faith and trust in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ as payment for your sin. When you do that, we, we have knowledge, head knowledge, and we had that mouth knowledge. You go to this prayer, a little prayer, but no. When your heart is changed 
And that's why sometimes we don't see any change in people's lives after they say they're a Christian. Well, you're no different than you was uh, before. Well, because there wasn't a change of heart. It was all in the head or the mouth. Sometimes we look at regeneration as reformation. I'm going to change my ways, but it don't change your life. Okay, so if you don't know Christ, let this be the day. Let this be the hour. And if you do know Christ, purpose in your heart that you're going to be more like Jesus today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day and for this time. We pray you would be with each one of us as we walk this pathway of life. We pray, Lord, we would be a shining light in this dark world. Father, we just thank you for the privilege we have to serve you and the purpose that we have to bring glory to you. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen.